Hi, welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to try to cover as much as I can about robotic pool cleaners for you so you can make an informed decision about which robotic pool cleaner you want for your pool or if you want to purchase a robotic pool cleaner to begin with. So I'll cover a lot of these details in today's podcast. Leslie's Pool Supplies is a proud partner of the Pool Guy Podcast Show. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals trusted partners since 1963 providing quality products and services to make pool care easy, and solutions and expertise to do it right. So I did preface this podcast with the fact that you may not even consider a robotic pool cleaner for a number of reasons. One, you may not like the price point. Two, you may like your current type of cleaner, suction or pressure cleaner, and you may not feel you have a need for a robotic pool cleaner. Um, But I'm not here to sell you one or change your opinion on that. I'm just here to give you information so you can kind of have an idea of why robotic pool cleaners, I think, are the uh, top choice now. If you do a survey, most people will say they prefer a robotic pool cleaner now over a suction or a pressure cleaner, which is a big change in the way people are thinking in the last few recent years. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that the robotic pool cleaners have really improved their technology, their reliability, and their cleaning ability. So I'll start with the reliability, which is what everyone wants to know when you buy anything. That's the first thing I ask when I'm looking for a computer or a camera or whatever I'm purchasing is how reliable is this product going forward. And you can generally tell the reliability of a product based on the manufacturer warranty. So if you see a product with a two or three year limited warranty or a two year full warranty, the manufacturer pretty much knows from their testing that this particular product, the robotic pool cleaner, let's say, is going to last two years with regular use without any issues, and so that's why they can give you a two-year warranty. They're not going to warranty something that they're going to be fixing all the time. They would lose money in that respect, and so they know that this particular robotic pool cleaner is going to go two years with no problems, and then after that, you may have to change a part here and there, but as far as overall mechanical problems, it's like any other piece of machinery. The more you use it, the more it's going to wear out. And that's just pretty much the fact of of how these work. And so the manufacturer will assume you're going to use a robotic pool cleaner maybe two times a week, maybe three times a week during the season. The season in most areas is four to five months at the most. And so they figure you're going to use this thing mainly in the summer and only a couple times a week. And therefore, this cleaner is going to last two years without issues if you're using it in that particular capacity. Now, if you're using it five days a week or six days a week and you're using it all year long, I don't think you're going to get two full years out of that cleaner without any issues or wear parts. So keep that in mind that the warranty is based on typical use by the consumer. And I think most people will use a robot two, two times maximum a week, sometimes three. Some people use it a lot more, of course, but... I think if you were to get a median, you would find that two times a week is about average. I personally throw my robot in my pool about once a week, so I'm probably below average, but I think the manufacturers understand that. And so also the price point of the cleaner is going to be an indicator of how long the robotic pool cleaner is going to last. If you purchase a robotic pool cleaner in the 900 to 1000 or 1000 plus price range, 1400, you figure that they put a lot of technology a lot of effort into that cleaner and it's going to be a very long lasting cleaner and in most cases that's the true truth behind that that you're paying you pay for what you get and so the higher price robotic pool cleaner will have more features but it's also made a lot better than say your four hundred dollar robotic pool cleaner and so if you're totally new to pools and pool cleaners let me just run down the three different types of cleaners for you quickly here that way you're kind of up to speed on a robotic pool cleaner The first type of cleaner that you may know of is called the suction side cleaner, and this is the most popular. These are very affordable. They're from $150 or $100 basically up to $400 or so. And these work off of your pool's filtration system. They connect either to the skimmer or to a side port vacuum port. Some of the more famous cleaners are the Pentair Creepy Crawly and the Hayward Navigator. So you probably have seen these around friends' or neighbors' pools. 
and that's what we call a suction side cleaner. They run when the pump motor is running and they use the pump's filtration system for all the dirt and debris that they capture. The next type of cleaner is a pressure side cleaner and this runs off of a dedicated booster pump and this is in a lot of areas where there's a lot of heavy debris so Texas, Florida will have these pressure side cleaners. Not super common in California but there are pressure cleaners here and these require the pool being built with a separate dedicated return line for the cleaner and a separate booster pump installed and these run off of a powered return line by the booster pump and the water is pushed into the top of the cleaner by venturi or jets on top and there's a debris bag on top in most cases unless you get the newer Polaris Quattro Sport or P40 that has a debris canister and these are very popular in areas that get a lot of debris. The only drawback with the pressure side cleaner is the fact that it does use more electricity because you need to have your main pump and the booster pump running at the same time for the cleaner to work. And then you have your robotic pool cleaner, which I'm going to touch on here. And these have been around for quite some time, over 20 years actually. But they've been refined over the last five years, I think, to make them the premier choice in cleaners. Um, for what I mentioned earlier about the reliability has been improved on these cleaners. And also the cleaning ability and technology that goes into these cleaners has definitely been improved. So basically, look at a robotic pool cleaner as kind of a self-contained filtration and pump system attached to a cord plugged in. And so you drop it in the pool and it will actually pump, you know, X amount of gallons of water, 60 or 70 gallons of water per minute as it's filtering. I wouldn't say filtering, as it's taking the water in and cleaning the pool. And there are various ways for these cleaners to trap the debris and dirt. Some have canisters, some have what looks like almost like filter cartridges inside. Others will have a debris bag on bottom, otherwise known as robotic diapers. And this traps all the dirt and debris. And some can filter down to as low as 2 microns. Some filter down to 100 microns. And the micron is basically just this measurement of a particle. A D filter, a diatomaceous earth filter, will filter down to 3 microns a cartridge filter 15 to 20, and a sand filter to 40 microns. And so if you buy a robotic pool cleaner that filters down to 2 microns or 5 microns, it's basically the equivalent of a D filter filtration level. And if you buy one that filters down to 20 microns, you pretty much have a cartridge filter type cleaner running in your pool. So the filtration of the dirt and debris is one of the better selling points of a robotic pool cleaner. They work independently from your filtration system, so your filter stays cleaner longer. And this in itself makes them a great choice for a cleaner because when I run a robotic pool cleaner in my own pool, I stretch out the amount of time I need to clean my filter because none of the dirt is actually going in there. It's going into the robotic pool cleaner. As opposed to a suction side cleaner, all the dirt would be going into the filter. So definitely a plus for robotic pool cleaners and they've gotten a lot better with the size of the debris chambers. So some have really large capacity and it'll surprise you how much debris they can actually pick up. So if your pool gets a heavy amount of debris and you have a pressure side cleaner in the pool currently, the robotic pool cleaner would be a great transition for you. You wouldn't really miss anything by switching from a pressure cleaner to a robotic cleaner. You would actually save money on your electricity bill because another selling point of these robotic pool cleaners is that they use pennies every hour to operate. So basically they just plug in and they use 12 volts of electricity so this translates into very large energy savings if you're going from a pressure cleaner. Even if you're going from a suction side cleaner, you can also save a lot of money because a lot of times you're running your pool longer and at a higher speed because of the suction side cleaner that's in there. So if you have a robotic pool cleaner running independently from your filtration system, there's no reason to run your variable speed pump at 3100 RPMs because there's no longer a need for the suction cleaner to be moved about the pool with the robotic pool cleaner in the place of it. So Definitely a benefit there as far as energy conservation or saving on energy. And I should tie this in also with the beginning where I talked about how long the manufacturer expects the cleaner to last for. One thing that I should mention, which is important, is that the modern robotic pool cleaners in about a two hour period can clean an average size pool pretty thoroughly, 99% clean. Um, depending on the model you get, it could clean all the way up the pool walls to the water line and then of course the floor of the pool. And so they're only running about four hours a week technically. And so that's another reason why the manufacturers 
figure they're going to last a very long time in your pool without problems. They're also built a lot better. The seals that they use in the motors now can allow the robot to be left in the pool for weeks on end. It used to be in the old days you had to take them out of the pool. Now the more modern ones have actually a schedule which you can program and leave them in the pool all week if you desire to, desire to do that. I prefer taking them out every day myself. I think that extends longevity of it, but I'm kind of old school and I know I know about failures from the older robots where the seals and the motor failed. And so I guess I'm a little paranoid about that, but I take my robot out after I'm done using it every time. But the newer ones you can actually schedule it to run in your pool as long as it's in the water. They'll come on at a certain time of the week. You can schedule some of the newer ones to run one time a week, two times a week, three times a week, all week long if you wanted to. And it will just act just like a pressure cleaner or a suction cleaner that's left in your pool all week. Whether you need that or not depends on your pool and your preference, but I think in most cases running your robotic pool cleaner a couple of times a week will keep your pool looking really clean and you won't have any issues with that. I think one of the things you have to know is that you're paying for this technology of a superior cleaning. And so if you've never used a robotic pool cleaner in your pool, you'll be amazed at how clean the pool looks after using one. I'm talking more or less the higher end ones. So if you spend 700 to 1,000 or plus 1,000 on a cleaner, you're gonna get a really clean pool. I'm talking walls and in some cases a water line. And you're gonna notice that your pool looks much cleaner than it ever did with a suction cleaner or a pressure cleaner working in there. The speed of the robotic pool cleaner is what really sells it to a lot of people. Sometimes I'm testing cleaners in my pool, so I'll put a suction cleaner in and let it run for a few hours to make sure it's working correctly. And I gotta tell you, that thing feels like it's going slower than molasses compared to the robotic pool cleaner. So definitely you're gonna see a big difference in the cleaning time of your pool. Another thing that people like about robotic pool cleaners is the fact that once you're done with it, you take it out of the pool versus a suction cleaner or pressure cleaner where you see the hoses in the pool every day. And aesthetically, that takes away from a lot of looks of pools. And so a lot of the builders that build the higher end pools will, of course, give a robotic pool cleaner with the pool build so that the pool has that clean look. And I think for anyone who wants to have a pool that looks really clean without hoses in there, the robotic pool cleaner would be a great choice for you. Since I'm mentioning some of these features here, you can get a robotic pool cleaner that does various things. It could clean just the bottom of the pool and maybe up the slope or the cove. And that's usually a robotic pool cleaner in the $600 or less range. Or you can get a robotic pool cleaner that cleans the walls of the pool and the floors of the pool. And again, the price kind of dictates what comes on the cleaner. And then you can go even higher and get the cleaner that does both the floor, the walls, and actually cleans your water line or scrubs your tiles with the brush on front. You can buy cleaners without the brush, with two brushes, with dual motor brushes, with no brushes at all. Depending on what your needs are, they have a robotic pool cleaner basically for whatever you want to have, whatever features you want. And more or less, the price point will dictate the features that you're gonna get on your robotic pool cleaner. Now we can talk brands if you want. I've tested over 40 different robotic pool cleaners from all the major brands, from Dolphin, from Polaris, from Aquabot. I've tested robotic pool cleaners from Hayward, from WaterTech. So I'm pretty familiar with all the different models out there, all the different features. I've done videos on robotic pool cleaners from $300 up to $1,600. So I know the, the gambit that they all run. And if you're gonna get the highest end robotic pool cleaner, you're looking at the Dolphin or the Polaris brand. I think the Polaris Alpha IQ uh, Plus is probably the top of the line robotic pool cleaner at this point because it has not only does it have the connectivity with an app but you can actually connect it to your um, home's Wi-Fi network and you can actually control or turn on the robot when you're like you know two states away or wherever there's internet connection so if you needed to do that which most people don't but it does have that technology which is really cool um, you can also control it with the app and the phone and Dolphin makes a couple models that work off of your Bluetooth on your phone, but you can also program and control it with an app with a Dolphin robot. So I think the two premier, of course, manufacturers of robots are gonna be Polaris and Dolphin at this point. And I think Hayward makes some really good robotic pool cleaners also. 
They just don't have a wide variety of models available, um, but and also Polaris doesn't have quite that many models either, but they put a lot of tech in their models, so even though their range of models is smaller, and Dolphin does have a lot more, um, they do put a lot of tech into their robotic pool cleaners at Polaris. And as far as the other brands, Aquabot and Aquatron and Watertech, these are all really good companies, and they've all been making robotic pool cleaners probably longer than any of anyone else. Aquabot is actually the first one. And you'll find a lot of the three, four hundred, five hundred dollar robotic pool cleaners to be the Aquabot cleaners, and they're actually pretty good. They're the entry level cleaners at that price point. And Aquabot, of course, makes some higher end robotic pool cleaners also at the higher price points with a lot more features like everyone else. So choosing the brand, you just have to do your research. I can refer you to the ones that I've tested and let you know which ones I really like. For instance, I think Hayward makes a really good robotic pool cleaner with a tiger shark. I think it's underrated. To me, it has the largest debris opening on the bottom. And I do like the bottom loaded filtration canister they have in there, which is a really nice feature. But again, it's underrated because there's other robots out there that kind of steal the spotlight, like the Polaris I was mentioning. And then your Dolphin uh, robotic pool cleaners also have a lot of great features. So it's just a matter of doing your research and getting the robotic pool cleaner that you need for your pool and for your specific needs. You don't need everything if you have a small, you know, if you have a small in-ground pool and you have maybe 6,000 gallons, you may not want to get the Polaris Alpha IQ Plus. It may just be too much robot for you and you may just settle for the um, Aquabot uh, Breeze or the Aquabot IQ and that would be sufficient for your pool size. But if you have a 40,000 gallon pool, then definitely look at the more um, expensive cleaners with more bells and whistles. And usually the higher the price point, the longer the cord. And so if you have a large pool, you're going to need a robotic pool cleaner with at least 75 feet of cord or 60 feet in some cases. But you probably can't use a cleaner with 40 feet of cord. So all these are things you have to look at in detail before you pick a robotic pool cleaner to make sure you're not picking the wrong model or you're picking a model with features you don't need, or you're picking a model with features that are missing from your cleaner. So definitely you can contact me directly and I'll definitely direct you to the right robotic pool cleaner. Just so you know offhand, a lot of the robotic pool cleaners may have different names to them, but underneath the cleaner, they're all about the same. For instance, Dolphin makes a multitude of robotic pool cleaners, but a lot of the technology is the same across all of their robotic pool cleaners. And the same with Polaris and Aquabot. So even though the cleaner may look different, it may have the same parts of a cleaner or same components or features from another cleaner from the same manufacturer. So it's kind of like when you buy a car, you have different models, but they all have the same features. Like for instance, the Honda Civic has the same engine as the HRV, which is like the small SUV. And the same thing with the robotic pool cleaners, you're gonna have a lot of them with the same parts inside, the same components, but they're gonna have a different shell, different name, and they may be shaped a little differently. But I can definitely help you distinguish which robot's better for you based on your pool, and I can definitely guide you. Since I don't sell any pool products directly, I really don't have any preference to push one robotic pool cleaner to you over another, which makes me fairly neutral. I do have my preferences, of course, like everyone else, but I can definitely help you find the right robotic pool cleaner. So let me talk about a few drawbacks to the robotic pool cleaner so that this is kind of balanced. Number one, I think the biggest drawback is if you do pool service and a customer has one of these, they'll have to throw it in the pool for you in most cases. And you may show up for your service day and the pool is messy because they didn't put the robot in that week. That's kind of a major drawback and that's kind of why pool service companies shy away from them and they only sell suction cleaners or pressure cleaners that stay in the pool all week long because technically we can't trust the customer to go out there and throw the robot in. And so that is one handicap. You can of course get the ones you can program and leave them in the pool all week. But I don't know, I, again, I personally don't like doing that, but they're definitely available for sale and they do advertise that ability. But I've seen what happens to a suction cleaner or pressure cleaner left in the pool week in and week out, 365 a year, and they don't look too hot when you pull them out. So. I think if you're going to spend $1,500 or $1,000 on a robotic pool cleaner, it's best to take it out after using it if you want to preserve that 
and storing it in your garage or somewhere where it's safe out of the sun definitely is also something you need to think about. It's basically a piece of electronic equipment and so you don't want to leave it out in the hot sun all summer long and therein is another drawback. It is a complicated piece of machinery in most cases so to service a robotic pool cleaner you can't really do it yourself at home. You don't have the diagnostic tools nor do you have the ability to, to change components in most cases and so you're going to have to take it to a local shop or you're going to have to send it into the manufacturer which to some is a pretty major drawback because then you don't have your cleaner for two or three weeks, sometimes a month, depending on where their headquarters is at and how long it takes them to fix it. So I think to me, if there's a problem with the cleaner and not having it for two or three weeks, it's a major drawback. You won't have anything to clean your pool and you may have to get your backup suction cleaner and throw it back in the pool. So if the robotic pool cleaner companies can come out with some kind of kit they can send out to people that are handy, I think that would be a great start to making them a lot more accessible. Um, but yes, they are a piece of electronic equipment, and so you can't really take them apart like a suction cleaner and repair them in your backyard. So a drawback for sure. Another drawback is the price point. People don't like spending $1,000 for a cleaner for their pool when they can buy a suction cleaner for two or $300 or $100 on Amazon. So definitely a drawback there because people will purchase things based on price a lot of times. To me, I think it's definitely worth it. I think investing in a robotic pool cleaner that does what I described in this podcast is worth spending the money on, but you may disagree and just go with the suction cleaner, and that's perfectly fine. I think the price point has always been the biggest hurdle for consumers to purchase a robotic pool cleaner, and I wouldn't argue that point with you either at this point. Um, people have preferences and how much they want to spend for their pool products, and it may be out of your budget for sure. And I think another big drawback, and this is one that has come by the fact that they've become so popular and they're so prevalent, is that there are so many models now available that it's hard to decide which one is the correct one for you. There are retail-only models, there are pool store, the pool store, there are internet-only models. I guess a retail store would be a pool store. There's internet-only models. So there's a variety of different models of robotic pool cleaners out there for you, different brands. Um, so there's it's like an overload of choices in a lot of cases of which one that you would want to get. I think something that's not mentioned a lot is that when you get the robotic pool cleaner out of the pool, it can be quite heavy. And so if you're elderly or if you can't really lift heavy weights, there are a couple models that I definitely would recommend. Of course, the higher end Dolphin and Polaris cleaners will evacuate the water for you, but a lot of the other cleaners won't, so they're going to be pretty heavy to get out of the pool. So that could be a drawback for some. But I think the benefits of the cleaner, how fast it cleans the pool, how well it filters the water down to as much as as little as two microns, and the fact that um, it's really a great way to keep your pool looking clean without having the hoses and cords in there definitely outweighs the negative of the cleaner. If you have maybe an elderly parent and you want a cleaner for them that's pretty easy to operate, I think the robotic pool cleaner would be great. You just have to have them throw it in the pool or toss it in the pool or put it in the pool, I should say. Turn it on and it'll clean the pool and then at the end they just have to take it out of the pool. And if you get the higher end ones that evacuate the water, it'll be very easy for them to get the cleaner out of the pool. Aquabot also makes very light models like the Aquabot Breeze or the Aquabot SE. And these are really lightweight cleaners and so they're not a problem for people that can't lift heavy weights. So there's basically a model for everyone out there. I just think you have to shop around and of course uh, on my website swimmingprolearning.com I have a list of my top high-end, my top mid-range, and my top low-end robotic pool cleaners. And low-end I mean as in price, not as in quality. And so you can check that out there and see which model would be right for your pool. And you can also email me directly at david at swimmingprolearning.com and I can answer any questions you may have about a particular robotic pool cleaner model. Again, I've tested and filmed over 40 of these things, so I'm quite familiar with robotic pool cleaners. And if you're in the industry and you're looking to enhance your business, definitely check out my coaching program at PoolGuyCoaching.com. A lot of great benefits there. You can learn more, again, at PoolGuyCoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. Leslie's Pool Supplies has been do-it-yourselfers and pool trade professionals' trusted partner since 1963, providing quality products and services to make pool care easy and solutions and expertise to do it right.